Revolution now. Today we're going to be talking about a very important topic that I know a lot of people are interested in, a lot of people uh, are, are, are curious about, but I think a lot of people just kind of shy away from because it seems so complicated and so such a sensitive topic that I think a lot of people would rather just kind of say, you know what, I don't even know where to get started with understanding this topic. Uh, but it's back in the news again with Big Thief making a statement saying that they are deciding to play in Tel Aviv, Israel, which has gotten a very strong backlash from activists who are very disappointed in Big Thief's decision to play in Israel, even though they kind of in a weird way acknowledged in their Instagram post that they knew what they were doing was controversial and not very good. I want to make this video for people who really don't know anything. They don't know anything, or maybe they just know a little bit, but not they don't know very much about the Israel Palestine. Palestine conflict. They don't really fully understand what's the big deal if Big Thief has friends and family in Israel. What's the big deal if they play a show there? Why is everyone getting so mad? If you're just a complete beginner or you don't know how to feel about this topic, this video is for you because I'm just going to lay out the, the, the objective Wikipedia facts that you just you can't really debate with because it's just they're just the cold hard facts and I'm gonna keep it simple I'm not gonna go back a hundred years in history and explain all the ins and outs because uh, that would take much more than a, a one YouTube video and I'm not qualified to do that but I will give you the the the, the here's what you what you need to know and I think it's stuff that's important to know and everyone should know so just sticking with facts that are on the ground here in 2022 not going back in history explaining all the ins and outs just looking at the situation here in 2022, looking at February of 2022, Amnesty International, a renowned organization that has been around for many decades, that is, they're not political, they're not like a leftist activist group, they try to be objective, they have donors from all across the political spectrum, they're a, a nonprofit whose job it is to investigate and report on and try to help overcome human rights abuses all around the world. They just came out this year in February of 2022 with a report accusing the the current Israeli political system of being um, what they call apartheid and an apartheid system. Apartheid is a term that maybe some of you are familiar with, maybe some of you aren't. Apartheid was the term which described South Africa's highly unequal, very violent and very unjust political system that existed until the 1990s, where basically there was the, the white population, which was the minority in South Africa, that controlled the political system and had a lot more political freedom and a lot more political rights, which was completely segregated from the, the majority, the South African black population, which had less political rights. Just a completely unjust system of two different tiers based off your skin color of how much rights you get. So for Amnesty International to, to, to use that term apartheid to describe what's happening in Israel right now, where the Israeli political system and the occupied territories of Palestine are giving more rights to the, the Israeli Jewish population over the Palestinians, it's a pretty heavy serious accusation, uh, and it's not just Amnesty International, it's also Human Rights Watch. There's been other organizations that have called out Israel for what they've created here is essentially a, a, a an apartheid system, and that's a, that's a pretty, that's a pretty, uh, that's a pretty heavy accusation, and I, I don't think it, uh, it should be taken lightly, and I actually think it, 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 you know, just using the word apartheid, it doesn't even do the f a full justice to kind of describe what's happening there, because there's a lot of differences between South Africa and Israel and Palestine. Just as someone who, who reads the news and keeps up with the news and tries to follow with current events, there's no doubt that there is serious, serious human rights abuses, like pretty much nonstop coming from Israel against Palestinians, like just literally less than a month ago in May. A very renowned, famous journalist journalist who's been reporting on Palestine was murdered by the Israeli government and there's a video of it and she's wearing a, a, a bright helmet and a bright vest that makes it very cool, clear that she's a reporter, she's a journalist. Very clearly there's a video, like I said, you can watch the video, I don't recommend you do because you're going to watch some an innocent person get murdered. It's someone who's clearly not a threat, making it very clear that she's a journalist, is just complete, just just murdered by the 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 uh, the Israeli mil uh, military, the IDF, and it's like I said, it's it's there's a video. There's no there's no confusion about what's going on. There's really no defending what happened there. It's very it's, it's transparently just uh, killing an innocent person. This is something that is ongoing. Whether you're looking at the the Human Rights Watch or the Amnesty International or just keeping up with the news, watching what's going on. 
uh, it's a, it's you know apartheid state persistently seeing human rights abuses coming out of the Israeli government. And if you look at the situation in the Israeli government, what you're gonna see is a government that seems pretty content with the status quo. There's lots of conversations about wanting to move towards peace, but you know you got the right wing in Israel, which kind of is like pretty explicitly like pro-apartheid. They won't use the term apartheid, but they're pretty pro, you know, we gotta be tough on Palestine because they're criminals. And then even, you know, in the left wing in Israel, which doesn't have as much political power, they're still kind of like, you know, putting words out there about wanting to find a more peaceful situation. But it's a, it's kind of like in a, in a stalemate where it's like, this is a crisis, apartheid, whatever you wanna call it. That's just, the current political system in Israel is content with just letting fester. This is where it kind of, I think, when we have a crisis like this, requires some outside prodding, some some external pressure to try to get the ball rolling because it really does not have to be like this. You don't have to have, you don't have to have an apartheid state. It's like, oh gosh, this conflict's really complicated. We have no choice but to put people into tears and treat people unequally. There, no, that doesn't, You no matter how you feel about it, that, that doesn't, that, that, that's not, it doesn't have to make, you don't have to make sense like that. The current situation is extremely unjust and it's not, there's no signs of it changing. Actually, the fact that a, a really famous journalist was just killed a few weeks ago, it hardly made the news and everyone's moved on, to me suggests we're still very deep into this passive, this passivity. And likewise with uh, Big Thief saying, you know what, I don't know, it's a complicated situation. We don't, we know it's, you know, we know it's nuanced, but we're gonna play there anyways. It's just, you know, we're in a state of, for some reason, Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, all these things are just happening that just is screaming. Everyone, look, look. This is really, really, really bad. This is like South Africa apartheid bad. This is horrible. But everyone's just kind of passively, you know, I don't want to get into it. I don't want to look. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to share my opinion on it. It's a sensitive topic. It's a, it is a sensitive topic. It is. It goes into really, really sensitive scenarios where we're starting to talk about situations like genocide and, and, and colonialism and, and anti-Semitism. These are very sensitive topics. I understand why people are being passive and would rather not take a stance, but you know how I know all this stuff that I'm telling you right now? It's actually because back in 2015, Thurston Moore, I'm a huge Sonic Youth fan. I got a Sonic Youth tattoo. Sonic Youth, Thurston Moore. Thurston Moore said, you know what? I'm putting my foot down. I am not playing in Tel Aviv. I'm canceling my show in Tel Aviv. That got attention from the media. And myself, back in 2015, I was probably close to 18 years old, obviously the age where everyone's very into politics and very into to music. I saw that, I'm like, oh, wow. The situation must be really bad there if Thurston Moore is saying he's not gonna play a show there. And then you know what I did? I did my research and I realized, oh, oh. There's an apartheid, an apartheid situation. But I want you to understand though, it's not a hopeless situation at all. It's not a situation where we have to say, oh, it's really bad, but it's really complicated. So let's just kind of go along with it and just ignore it because it's impossible. That's actually just completely bull crap. We know from South Africa, which was able to overcome their apartheid system. Uh, obviously they still have very, very serious issues with inequality, but at least the, the most brutal aspects of apartheid are finally gone now because of external pressure from other countries putting sanctions on South Africa, because of musicians saying we're not gonna play in South Africa because of their apartheid system. Because of external pressures, finally there was enough pressure on South Africa and also internal pressure from political groups inside of South Africa as well for them to finally say, we're not doing this apartheid thing anymore. It's gonna be hard, but we are going to get rid of it and we are just gonna, whatever it takes, we're gonna do it because there's there's no justifying an apartheid system. The internal situation in Israel, like I said, their political system, their political leaders, seems pretty content with just letting things kind of stay in the status quo. It's gonna take external pressure. It's gonna take bands putting their foot down and getting everyone around the world saying, hey, we need to say, fix this situation. And like I said, you're gonna hear people say it's too complicated to fix. Bullshit. If you really think it's a situation that it's just impossible to fix, therefore being passive and just continuing to play show theirs and just ignoring it uh, is, is fine, then you need to think more creatively. You need to just do a little bit more research on history of conflict and how humanity has been able to overcome many, many, many very deep and complicated challenges. And this is one where we have a lot of power. We actually do have a lot of power. We can say, hey Israel, shame on you. We're not gonna play shows there anymore until you get this straightened out, get it fixed, 
or seeing with our own two eyes human rights abuses every single month, and you're just continuing to downplay it, continuing to passively say it's okay, and you know who's can make the difference? It's musicians. Musicians don't have that much power in the world. They don't have that much money. They don't have that much power. But you know what? One, one area where they really do have a lot of power is with these specific situations because we saw with South Africa a big part of their motivation to overcome the apartheid system was with external pressure. We need to do it again. We need to do it again. We can't be passive. We can't say it's unfixable. We can't say it's a horrible situation that's too complicated and too sensitive because that's all bullshit. The power really lies in the Israeli government who is upholding the apartheid system. And in order to change it, we need to put that external pressure, which means doing the very bare minimum of, of being a popular band and saying, no, we're not playing here. Here's why. I know it's going to upset the people in Tel Aviv, but guess what, people in Tel Aviv? This is how it's going to be from now on until you fucking fix it. I hope this video was educational and thanks so much for watching. I know, by the way, it's a very complicated issue and I know in the comments I'm going to get people who are uh, maybe pro-Palestine or maybe have family members that are in one way or the other directly affected by this issue who are going to be upset with me for not being critical enough of Israel and I understand your feelings there. But likewise, there's going to be maybe some people in the comments who are saying, going in the other direction saying, hey, you didn't explain enough about the Israeli perspective, which um, I understand as well. But, you know, I think at the end of the day, it's it's really, um, you know, when you have an apartheid system and you have big, major, uh, non-profit, non-political organizations calling it apartheid, I, I think being passive and just saying it's too complicated and walking away is, is not the right dis dis decision. And people like Thurston Moore, taught me about the issue. I'm hopefully teaching some people who are watching this video now about the issue, and it's a shame that Big Thief is not continuing the bare minimal activism that, um, you know, I think musicians are responsible for uh, doing with, all, with, the, with the power that they do have. So thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, subscribe, and, um, you know, I'll maybe share it with someone who's also interested in this topic. So because I think we re everyone really needs to know as much about it. And um, I'd love to see your comments because I know it is an issue with a lot of, a lot of angles and a lot of emotions. So thanks so much for, for watching. Punk Revolution now.